everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to ChasingCinema.com or our official YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Toronto. Today, going to be talking about CinemaCon 2018. Uh, another studio presentation we'll be breaking down. Today, I'm going to be talking about STX Films, which happened earlier today, the closing presentation for day two. I've also done presentation recaps for Sony, Disney, and Warner Brothers. Click that white eye to find all of those. Or the best way to keep updated, uh, especially for CinemaCon, is follow me on Twitter. Guys, I am live tweeting every presentation. I'm posting things that are going on. I'm filling up with movie updates, answering your guys' questions. So please shoot on over to the Twitter. Follow me if you want constant live updates. But I'm going to recap the presentation for you right now, um, which was definitely one of the quicker presentations. It didn't have much going on for it. There wasn't any big major announcements like there had been for Disney and Warner Brothers and such like that. Um, but let's hop right into it. Uh, first, uh, DTSX um, showed a sizzle reel of their recent work to open up um, the presentation. And then uh, they showed a little sizzle reel. Then Beam STX. And then Adam Fogelson, the chairman of the STX Entertainment, uh, who has taken the stage for the past three years now. Um, they, I mean, this is their third presentation at CinemaCon. I was there for their first and, you know, they were like, we want to just really do these star-driven films. And they've done quite well with, you know, Bad Moms, Bad Moms Christmas. They did The Foreigner. I mean, they've, they've, they've done quite well for these smaller uh, budget films or, or medium budget films with led by big stars. Anyway, they hopped right into it as well, claiming that the sky's the limit for their future. And the first um, cloud they visit, if you will is a look on a drift, the new drama about two people stranded at sea after a sailing, their sailing boat is crashed in a storm. Film star Shailene Woodley and Sam uh, Claflin. Um, yeah, there's a trail out for this movie right now, and um, this movie just kind of gave us more examples and more uh, of the suffering or uh, dilemmas that these th this couple's going to go through. You know, um, I, I honestly think the movie, I mean, you know, of course your first instinct is like, oh, that's the mountain between us, but this time they're on the water. And uh, while the footage did, I mean, I like Shailene Woodley. It, it's a bummer that she's got kind of strung up in some not so great films. I would, I mean, I think she is majorly talented. And I think this, I mean, hopefully they, she could get a film that really kind of brings her back out and says, look, this is me. Don't judge me on the why, the young adult stuff that I've done. But, um, you know, I, I don't think, I think while interesting, I can't lie and say I didn't find it very familiar. And that's the problem. I think a lot of the stuff that we're going to be going over as far as S X S T X, while it looked interesting, I think it just looked familiar. Um, Shailene Woodley, I told you they already kind of came on stage. Um, Claflin said the whole experience start to finish was eye-opening. They shot a ton on the actual water um, and uh, he had a whole new respect for sailing. And then uh, Woodley really kind of harped on the idea that this movie is about true love and she was really uh, quote it was a really exciting experience to see two people stripped to their core end quote and then how they kind of are brought together and I think those are interesting elements that the movie has to offer I've always been fascinated with the idea of people being stranded or dehydrating in the middle of the ocean I find that terrifying um but you know I I, I don't know this movie is going to break barriers or do something I mean it doesn't have me begging to see it just yet <laughs> Now, the next film they're moving on to is Peppermint, which is an action thriller starring Jennifer Garner. And Jennifer Garner took the stage and stole everybody's hearts away. I mean, I like Jennifer Garner, but I've never really watched many interviews with her or had much, um, seen much for interactions, but she had the crowd rolling. She seemed so charming and charismatic. She, she, she stole the show. Um, you know, uh, in, in the, the clip that we saw, you know, she is a character who lost her family to um, a shootout which involves the cartel. And after a crooked trial, she disappears. And then five years later on the on the anniversary of her family's death, she comes back and wants, quote, justice. Um, again, a movie that looks really familiar, right? We've seen the revenge stories, uh, you know. Um, actually, it's from the same director as Taken. Um, you know, things that we've seen before, but I think from a different perspective, a different character ideology. I mean, this movie, 
looked at least more appealing to me while familiar. We have seen these movies over and over again, and we they seem to keep making money, so of course they keep making them. But Jennifer Gardner, like I said, stole the show and made me so interested in her just as a person. I'm excited to see her take on this role. Um, she worked with the same stunt coordinators as she did with Daredevil and Electro, which I think is quite cool. And uh, she really kind of emphasized how much she was training for this movie. And I, I think it could be a lot of fun. Also, uh, Fulgerson, the host, the evening, kept making jokes about Capital One. And Jennifer Garner said, you're right, we should probably stop talking about this movie and let's start talking about the fact that there's no blackout dates. And, you know, got a huge laugh from the audience. And she was just so charming. Very, very fun. <laughs> the next film that they tackled was called Second Act, which stars Jennifer Lopez. Uh, this film, um, before getting footage, had a... Not this film, but this segment had Jennifer Lopez talking via video, thanking exhibitors, thanking movie theaters, thanking STX Films. You know, just the basic kind of stuff, and then introducing her new film, Second Act, which is about a woman who works at a grocery store, Walmart type of store. And after someone, I don't know who exactly, the relationship wasn't quite clear, makes a face Facebook and a fake profile for her, gets her this new high executive job, and she kind of has to take on this role and see if she could do it. But yet, it starts kind of changing her and she's forgetting who she really is. Kind of like... You know, um, Christina Applegate and Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. But anyway, <laughs> um, it looks fine. Uh, the same producer that worked on Made in Manhattan with her. Um, looks familiar, not a huge standout, but Jennifer, Lo Jennifer Lopez is also one of the actresses that, you know, is quite charismatic. And, and I find even in some films that aren't very good, she stands out to be quite good. So we have that going for us. They also started talking about their upcoming animated film, which is going to be quite big according to them which is opening set to open in may 2019 called ugly dolls uh they recently made franchise partners with walmart which is quite big last year at the stx presentation they gave us an ugly doll which i have right there but i don't want to move and script the camera um pr promoting this movie and i know that they said uh, pitbull had signed on to be on this movie and they're working really hard and that was pretty much the end of that then they brought out Pete Berg, or Peter Berg, Mark Wahlberg, uh, Lauren Cohen, Ike Oasis, and Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey, Rousey, to talk about the new film, Mile 22. Last year, Mark Wahlberg came out and told us that they're working on a film that was going to give him the character of his career, uh, the distinct franchise of his career, and this was going to be the beginning of it. And Mile 22, uh, from, you know, in term in in, in quoting uh, Fulgerson again is its own animal and kind of their own animal of uh, Jason Bourne and Ethan Hunt um, really this kind of ghost of a group uh, you know far higher you know this, this this group of ghosts if you will in the government that go and take out these incredible jobs and Mark Wahlberg is at the helm and Mark Wahlberg was talking obviously him Peter Berg have been. Uh, teaming up quite a bit. They teamed up for Patriot's Day, uh, Deepwater Horizon, and um, Lone Survivor, and obviously all very heavy, serious dramas that meant something to them. But uh, Mark Wahlberg said they wanted to try to do something where they can have a bit of fun, and this was the outcome. They they say it's a lot of kick-ass action. It's a really, really great time. Uh, the, the first look looked like it was going to be something, again, familiar, but hopefully will be quite fun. I'm a Ronda Rousey fan. I'll go see it because of her. I will say uh, Pete Berg and Mark Wahlberg have kind of been mostly misses for me. Though the films uh, really do deal with some really heavy and very serious topics, I don't think they handled them necessarily the best way possible. Um, but I'm kind of glad to see them not take on a true story this time around. Lastly, to conclude the STX presentation, we got something that I didn't even know I wanted. And it's called The Happy Time Murders which stars Melissa McCarthy in a puppet. <laughs> um, this is If the Muppets Went Bad, right? This one was actually directed by Brian Henson, you know, of Jim Henson uh, and the Henson Company. Um, you know, I've always loved the Muppets. I've always loved Sesame Street. And this kind of looks like a very, very raunchy version of what that could be. Um, I mean, they showed us an R-rated trailer, cursing, a lot of sexual type dirty stuff with the Muppets. Um, Fulgerson said the way they pitched this movie, it was they were saying, you know, let's think about what Kermit and Miss Piggy do when no kids are around, when they go home and they're not filming anymore. What do they do with each other? 
And the film had like at least a 20 second clip of a puppet climaxing. <laughs> um, it looks wacky, it looks outrageous. Um, and I actually, I'm not gonna lie, I think it looks like a fun time. Um, you know, I, I've always been a fan of puppets. You know, I think I think that's a really cool art and I think to mix that in a, in a raunchy comedy will be quite fun. Obviously, um, Team America World Police did something similar. Obviously, those were marionettes. Um, this time we're gonna actually see puppets that, you know, were made famous on Sesame Street. Not, not the same characters, obviously. These are di di completely different characters. Uh, but the Happy Time Murders look like it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And that's what concluded, concluded the STX presentation. Guys, tomorrow we got some exciting stuff. It's only been day two of CinemaCon. Again, if you missed my recap for Sony, Disney, or Warner Brothers, hit that white eye and find all of our presentations. Follow me directly on Twitter, at Jacob Trona. If you guys have any questions about what I went over today or you want to ask me anything specific, write me in the comment section or tweet me. I'll do my best to address the questions you have or answer anything you're wondering. Um, also, if you want to see the live tweets, live updates, live movie news addressed right from CinemaCon, follow me on Twitter because that's where I deliver this information live as it's happening. Um, other than that, check out my move, check out movie reviews and all the other fun stuff we do at Chasing Cinema. Watch out for some upcoming interviews, which are going to be very, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jacob Toronto, and please continue Chasing Cinema.